Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. The most requested video of the week is how to get hired fast. Many of you sent me messages like this. I'm getting interviews, but I'm not getting hired. One person said he had over 200 interviews. If you've had over 200 interviews, there's something in the interview that is not sitting well with the interviewer. The job of a resume is to get you interviews, but it's apparent the interview is not sealing the deal. As someone who has spent most of my career in HR, I'm going to share some inside tips on how to get hired fast. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell icon to get a new video every Wednesday. So here are my five tips to get hired fast. I was attending a dinner where Oprah's partner Stedman was speaking at. He was discussing his book. I ended up chatting with him and asking him, so this is your first book? No, this was like his 10th book. <laughs> that awkward moment where you humiliate yourself. <laughs> I don't think he'll be introducing me to Oprah anytime soon. Once was enough to teach me this lesson. Always do your homework. If this was an interview, I would have failed miserably. <laughs> this brings me to my first step. Tip one, prepare for the interview. I can't stress this enough. As someone who has conducted over a thousand interviews, I see this time and time again. Most candidates come to the interview unprepared. Do what the 90% aren't doing. You at least get a week up front letting you know about the interview. Don't underestimate the power of being prepared or see this as something trivial. Use this time wisely. Think of job searching as a job. You are the CEO of your job search. You have to put in the effort. You can't wing it. How would you rate your efforts thus far? Be honest. There are hundreds of candidates and applications. How do you stand out? It's a competition. If you were preparing for the Olympics, where the best of the best are, then you would train hard and put in the work. This is affecting your livelihood. Give it 100%. You will be far better prepared than the vast majority of candidates. Why have I achieved so much success in my career? I did what others won't do. I had to climb from the bottom, but I put in the work. I stayed focused. You can outshine anyone if you are determined enough. Your best tool for preparation is the mirror. <laughs> Not just to see how fantastic you look. As a keynote speaker, I can't tell you enough the value of a mirror. I practice my presentations and it's a significant confidence booster. Look at your body language. How often do you smile? How can you improve? Being well prepared gives me more time to engage and focus on conversations. You can do the same with the interviewer. It's about the flow of conversations. You need to rehearse your answers. Prepare, but don't regurgitate your answers. Make it sound natural. Do mock interviews with family members or friends. Role playing is a great way to practice answering questions in an interview setting. Record yourself and see how you look. Are your arms folded? Do you appear tense, angry or confused? Let the person interviewing you ask you random interview questions for which you have not been told ahead of time. Acting out interviewing scenarios reveals how you might react when you are put on the spot and it can help you to improve your interviewing skills. Always do your homework about the company and the interviewers. I know you will thank me for this tip later on. Please don't jeopardize all your amazing skills, talents and experience because you fail to do your homework. Invest your time in preparing for your interview and you will be rewarded. Tip two, research the company ahead of the interview. Visit the company website. Look at the products or services they sell. One candidate had no idea about the product we were selling in his interview. Talk about a deal breaker. 
Does the company have a mission statement? What are their core values? Many candidates have no clue about the company or make no attempt to show this. At least demonstrate you are interested. Check out sites like Glassdoor to determine the workplace culture. Look up the company's competitors. Review company financials if available online. Investigate the company's activity on their social media accounts. Search Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, and mainstream media for company mentions. Review the company's share price over the past year. Make sure you understand the basics behind their business and their customers. How many of you do this? If there's little information about the company, send a message asking if they can share some information about their business so you can better prepare for the interview. Also, research the interviewers if you know who they are on Google and LinkedIn. So you have an idea of their personalities. Learning about the company will help you to understand the role within the department and the function of the department within the organization. Knowing this information forms the foundation for many of your answers in the interview. It will help you to gain control of the interview and this is what you really want. The interviewing process is not just about answering questions, it's about strategically spinning a conversation towards showcasing your strengths and abilities. Having little knowledge about the company is questionable. When you can demonstrate in the interview that you have thoroughly researched the company, it will be easy for you to articulate how you will add value to the organization. Invest the time to prepare so that you can ace the interview. Three, personalize your answers to the specific rule. Tell a good story. Don't use the same canned answers for all your interviews. Take the time to personalize your answers so it is relevant and applicable to the company and rule you are applying for. Read the job description ad carefully, then determine questions that might come up. You are not here just to get any job, show them you want this specific job. Tailoring your answer to the specific rule will leave the interviewer interested to know more. Elaborate on your achievements and skills that match the rule's description. The interviewer wants to know what are your strengths, weaknesses, you know, competencies, accomplishments, your approach to handling problems, and how this would fit into the rule. So make a list of your strengths and weaknesses in advance by doing a personal SWOT analysis. Are you a quick learner? Can you multitask? Are you a strong team player? Can you work under pressure? Do you have good communication skills? Discuss your key strengths that perfectly fit the rule and prepare examples of how you have demonstrated them successfully in your current rule or past rules. For example, if the rule calls for strict deadlines, mention how often you beat deadlines. If the interviewer asks how do you handle stress, most people will give a generic answer. Well, I take a break, I try not to panic, follow the car technique, the context the action you took and the result. Tell them about a time you had to complete a project within a deadline. Give a specific situation. Write down your career accomplishments ahead of time. As I stated earlier, do your homework. This will be the basis for all your answers. Use from your experience and tie it into the answer. Write down all these things and have them saved. A time you solved the problem, a time you handled a difficult employee, a time you took the lead on a project, a time you made a mistake on a project, put this all down in what I call your experience toolbox. So you're almost at the end of the interview and all is going well. Suddenly the interviewer asks you a question that you're not prepared for and your mind goes blank. Tell me a time you had to deliver tough feedback. You start to panic. I don't have this written down. Oh my gosh, what will I do? Don't panic, remain calm and collected. Take a deep breath and relax. Ask the interviewer, can you repeat the question? Take time to compose your answers. Don't start speaking until you know what you wanna see. 
always type everything back to what you do know. So the interviewer didn't ask you for one of the specific situations you had written down. But if you look into your experience toolbox, you can see you have written down a time you handled a difficult employee. Use from that story to demonstrate how you deliver tough feedback. You've got this. Tip four, value. Show how you can add value. If you were selling someone this pen, how would you sell them? Most people would say the features of the pen. It's a nice pen, it writes well, it's shiny, it's cost effective. Wrong answer. Never attempt to sell a product. Rather than selling the pen, sell the need. Focus on needs analysis to create a demand. Then relate the answers to the pen's features. Stop listing your skills and experience, the features, and instead focus on the needs of the employer. State how your skill set and experience can solve their problems. You can ask, can you describe your ideal candidate? What are the biggest challenges the role has to address? You need to identify and address their specific needs. Show how you add value, how you solve problems. Going back to the pen, a sell happens when you connect the functional utility of the item to the needs of the audience and show them how it helps them realize their goals. In the same regard, you are the product. An amazing product, may I add. <laughs> In this area of personal branding, we must sell ourselves. Everyone is hired as a problem solver. You need to connect your functional utility to the needs of the hiring manager and demonstrate how you can solve their problems, make their lives easier, and allow them to achieve their goals. What did you add to the previous company and what can you add to this company? Did you make or save your company money? If so, state exactly how much. If you did a project that is in alignment with what's listed in this job description, use this as a talking point. Talk about the skills you have attained and how you can apply the skills and experience in their environment and in this role. You have to connect the dots between your past and their future. It's about showing them what's possible. It's just like those commercials when advertising takes your imagination to a different level as they show you how they can solve your problems you didn't even have in the first place. <laughs> Use action words as increased, reduced, enhanced, expanded, eliminated, added, minimized, grew, elevated, exceeded, shortened, or generated. State quantifiable results. Think primarily in terms of money and time. Dollar amounts, volume, percentages, and time spans are all great ways to quantify your accomplishments. Did you exceed your goals often? If so, to what degree? I increased customer satisfaction to a 90% rating over a 24 month period as a customer care representative. I exceeded retail sales goals by an average of 20% every quarter in 2019. I successfully negotiated 90% of contract renewals totaling 3 million in revenue. Focus on how you solve problems. Be specific. What value can you bring? The HR manager will have no choice but to shortlist and recommend you to the hiring manager. Remember to put in the emotion into selling yourself. You want the company to buy you. Be passionate. Show excitement. If you don't believe in the value you bring, no one else will. Tip 5. The congeniality factor. That's the X factor. Once you have done all the above and you have the congeniality factor, this significantly improves your chance of getting hired. Are you likable? As HRs, we skim through hundreds of resumes. Most look alike and most candidates have the same skill sets. What will set you above the rest is are you a nice person? Are you likable? We are all humans and no one is going to hire someone they don't like in spite of how talented you are. It's not only about the skills, it's about the team fit and the chemistry. Although answering questions is an important aspect of the interview process, other factors that play an important role in your selection is your personality, body language, and whether you're a good fit for the team and organization. 
The hiring manager will most likely hire someone who works well with the team. How do you differentiate yourself? How do you show that you are likable and will be a good culture fit? Your congeniality factor. A candidate can have all the skills, but if they are unlikable, a joke employee, I will not hire you. You need to differentiate yourself from the other candidates. Show details that make them see you as compelling and interesting. What activities are you involved in? This is my X Factor. I would use this in interviews and it worked all the time. I was a certified fitness instructor with AFA, Arabics and Fitness Association of America. I never did it as a job but I love fitness so I would teach my women's group in church and even led a fitness class after work in my previous organization. In my last job interview over 10 years ago, I mentioned this in the interview. The interviewer leaned forward and said, I am finding it so difficult to lose weight. What tips can you give me? I was like, yes, hallelujah. You hooked her in for the beat and the whole interview went of course for about 15 minutes with me discussing weight loss tips. <laughs> Interviewers are humans, although they may not seem like it at times. You need something compelling besides your skill to draw the interviewer in. Well, apparently this fitness instructor needs a fitness instructor herself with a COVID-19 weight gain. <laughs> yes guys, COVID-19 weight gain is very real. Okay, getting back to the point. Of course I got the job. <laughs> I remember one candidate I was interviewing said she makes a mean cheesecake and she also does breakfast for the team. When you mention things like this, you stand out. Are you a member of a sporting team? If you are involved in some activity that shows you as dedicated, resilient, compassionate and makes you a good team player, mention it. I know COVID-19 has put a damper on contact activities, but still mention it. That's your X factor. What can you do well? You will stand out and I'm sure when the interviewers are discussing how the interviews went, they will remember you. I specifically remember that candidate as a cheesecake lady. <laughs> you need to raise your likability factor. You need a wow factor to pull them in and want them to hire you on the spot. In conclusion, you are amazing. You have so much to offer. Take control of that interview. This is your moment. You have their attention. They are listening to you. Focus on the company's mission, vision, the specific role and your strengths which add value. Don't undersell yourself. This is your time to shine. And if you are not interviewing, Use this time to prepare because your chance will come. I want to thank you guys for watching. This is your time and season. There is a job with your name on it. Go forth and get it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more videos. Have a great day.